Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Compact Garage. In today's video we will be performing a teardown of my Predator 420cc Hemi engine to determine what may have caused it to blow up. Stick around until the end as the results of our investigation are sure to surprise you. And as always, thanks for tuning in. We will begin by detaching the front cover which is secured in place by 5 bolts. With the 8mm socket we can easily remove these bolts and take off the cover. Off camera, I proceeded to remove the carburetor, the air filter assembly, and the throttle linkage. It is important to note that the governor on this engine remains intact and has not been tampered with in any way. With the front cover removed, we could proceed with removing the top plate. This top plate houses the throttle linkage. So with the two 8mm bolts removed, we go ahead and slide this front cover up and then remove that last spring. There's one 10mm bolt that holds the govern arm. Remove the bolt and you can use a screwdriver to spread the ears apart and easily remove the arm. With the arm off, we're going to go ahead and remove the starter. This is held on by two 10 millimeter bolts. This bottom bolt fought me the entire way out and as you can see the amount of rust on that and corrosion, that would be the answer why. This top one came out with ease and I'm not sure why there was a difference between the two, but that one is spotless. So I'll give the starter a little bump there and it'll come right out. With the starter off, we're gonna go ahead and remove the valve cover. I've already moved five out of six bolts there. We go ahead and grab an eight millimeter socket and go ahead and take them all out. And with the valve cover off, we get a first glance at our valve train. At a quick glance, nothing appears to be wrong here. There was no obvious bent valves or broken push rods or bent push rods as I'm tearing this apart. So go ahead and remove that eight millimeter bolt. That's a keeper that holds the rocker arm I don't know what you would call those. Uh, the pins? And you just push those right out. You don't have to remove that C-clip. Go from the other side and push that out too. You're gonna wanna keep these in order so that they go back exactly how they came out. And with the pins out, we can remove the rocker arms. Like I said, it's important to keep these in order. They will only go on one way, but I'm sure somebody out there can mess it up. Next will be the push rods. 
I have a bin there that is organized, so I'm putting the right and the left for intake to exhaust. Remove that gasket. And there are lash caps on top of these valve stems that have to be removed. If you're not careful, you will lose these. But there they are, they'll just lift right off where you can use a little pocket magnet or something to just pick them off there. Nothing seems wrong. I'm not sure why this engine was running very poorly. I shouldn't say it's blown up, but it had a lot of backfire back to the carb. It just did not run very good at all. This engine was on a Yerf Dog go kart, and I'm looking to upgrade it so I could put it on a, another go kart frame that I'm working on currently. So the valves look good. There's a lot of carbon in there. You're gonna get combustion and carbon and everything in there. And some of you guys might be able to see the issue from here. However, I didn't notice this at a first glance. So I continued tearing it apart to find out what the issue might have been. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the coil and that's held on by two eight millimeter bolts put the coil off we're going to take this front cover off and these are all 10 millimeter bolts there are seven of them little word of advice if you can notice my crankshaft there has a little bit of rust go ahead and save yourself the hassle and grab some sandpaper and clean that up because i'm bumping this with a hammer handle I've got it broken loose and after fighting with it for a long time you can see the bearing is still on there. So there I am grabbing some sandpaper and cleaning it up. I did not damage the front cover at all but this bearing got hung up on the shaft from the amount of rust and would not come out. Next, we're gonna take out the balance shaft. And there we go. Nothing looks wrong at all internal. I did not find any metal. The cam looked good. The lifters were followers. They all looked good. So I'm gonna proceed with taking out the rod and looking at the bearings. I know that does not cause backfiring back through the carb, but I was already so far into it at this point, I figured, what the heck, let's tear it all the way down and just give this a good look over. It's two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the connecting rod to the crankshaft. And with those out, the bottom cap will easily slide off. And here you guys go. First glance at that bearing, it looks very good. I guess I shouldn't say it's a bearing because there is no bearings in this engine. It is just aluminum, but still looks very good. Next, we're gonna pop the piston out. And this is where I notice it wiping down with this rag. I noticed my rag got caught on the top side of that piston there. So I'm looking at it closer. And here's what I found. There's a jagged spot right there where the intake valve goes, where the intake valve has smacked the piston. It's a perfect stamp. And I don't know how I missed it the first time around, but I did. Quick glance at the cylinder, it looks good. Nothing in there. No ring lange at all. This engine has low hours on it. But at this point I'm confused on how the valve hit the piston when the governor and everything is still intact. It's very, very concerning to me at this point. So I'm looking into all the possibilities. So I decided to take a closer look at the cylinder head and the intake valve is on the left, the exhaust valve is on the right, and at this quick glance I do not see 
anything wrong with that valve. It doesn't look like it's lifted on one side or it's not obvious that it's bent. So I decided to dig out my grandfather's very old valve spring compressor and remove both the intake and exhaust valves to see if there was anything obvious. Uh, that was the exhaust valve there. Looking at it, nothing looks out of the ordinary with it. So here comes the intake valve. I see a questionable mark on the valve here. So the shiny spot is where the valve seals against the valve seat. And you can see where it's clean, 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 and then there's that dark spot right there. Not sure how well that shows on camera, but you can see the shiny spot and that very dark spot right there. The way the valve works is it's supposed to seal against that valve seat. So I should not see any dark spots on that valve. Right there on the stem, you can see where it's been riding against the guide. There's some heat there. I sprayed that with brake cleaner. Still will not come off. It is definitely a scoring mark on the valve stem itself. A perfect indication that this valve is bent ever so slightly, but still bent. And a quick look at the cylinder head here shows the same thing against that valve seat. You can see it's shiny the whole way around, but on the bottom side right there, you can see where combustion gases have gone past that valve and back through the intake, which would cause a backfire. I'm not sure how much of a backfire that would be, but any combustion gases getting into the intake is not a good sign. It only takes a little bit to ignite the fuel inside that carburetor. And that's what it was doing. So down in the comment section, let me know what you guys would do with this engine. The cylinder head needs some work. It needs new valves. But it's going on a go-kart that's going to weigh quite a bit. It is a Carter Bros 250 uh, interceptor that I have heavily modified. And that cylinder head there, I also broke a stud off with removing the exhaust manifold. I tried to heat that up. I tried welding a nut to it. It still would not come out, so it'll need to be drilled and tapped. So in the comment section, let me know, is it worth fixing this cylinder head? Or do I just buy a CNC ported head? Or do I buy a stage one, two, three, or four kit? Let me know in the comments. If you guys like this content, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss what we're going to do to this engine here in the future. And I might just show you guys what project this engine is going on and why it kind of needs to be a little bit more beefed up, in my opinion. All right, guys, until next time.